Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Tom Kelly. I'm an audio engineer, podcaster, and podcast producer, and this is Clean Cut Audio Mix Lab, a video series where I take your audio, yes, your audio, and I make it sound as good as I possibly can. We all know that presets don't work, so why don't I build a preset specifically for you and your voice alone so that you can take all of these settings and go through week after week for the rest of your podcast having better audio than you ever have. That's the point of Clean Cut Audio Mix Lab. If you'd like to participate, check out cleancutaudio.com slash mixlab. Submit your audio, get the lowest rate you possibly can by submitting now, and I'll walk you through what I did to your audio, do a little bit of promo for it in the meantime, and make it sound better than it ever has before. Let's check out what we're dealing with this week. All right, everybody, welcome back to another Mix Lab. This week, we have Christopher Grunlin of the Amazing Fiction Podcast, Not About Lumberjacks. I do not like narrative fiction for the most part, but this podcast is a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. I'll allow Christopher to introduce the show himself. My name is Christopher Grunland, and this is where I share my stories. Sometimes the stories contain truths, but most of the time they're made up. Sometimes the stories are funny, other times they're serious. But you have my word about one thing. I will never, ever share a story about lumberjacks. Now, Christopher sent me a couple photos of his setup. Let me just throw it in here. We've got a Shure SM7B running through a cloud lifter into a Mackie uh, mixer. And we have a Behringer compressor limiter expander rack and then a zoom h6 i believe those are the handy recorders um kind of a lot going on here it seems like he's processing a little bit through the behringer um to me the setup seems a little convoluted if it were me i would get rid of everything except the shore sm7b and if you want a mixer maybe get the roadcaster pro maybe a mix pre 3 to me, it just looks like a lot of cables, a lot of opportunity for interference, things to go wrong. Uh, but ultimately, the audio sounds pretty good, so I don't really want to judge this setup too harshly, since what I'm here for is mixing help. But let's take a look at, well, let's listen to the raw audio. Let's just hear what we got right out of the gate here. It was better than Joey imagined. A black beach winding along the crags like a pathway to a magical realm. So it's pretty good. There's a little bit of slapback delay, I'm assuming, from this wall kind of right in front of you, Christopher. Possibly the table itself. Uh, so you can get a little bit of sense of the room. It's not terrible. It's not this like long reverberation. It's a really quick early reflection. And it's a little bit of a slapback. So we're hearing that right out of the gate. Um, I would maybe look into trying to get that fixed at the source since Isotope D Reverb isn't really what you want to go to first thing. But since we're working with what we got, let's load up my... The first thing I always put on it, the master track is a WLM meter. And I'm just going to throw a limiter on here so it's not letting any peaks go louder the negative two decibels full scale. And uh, if we want to get really fancy here, we can even put in the WLM meter plus. I'm going to load up my podcast preset so it has a true peak max of negative two decibels true peak. All right, so we're just going to monitor the audio. The first thing that you can see is I already boosted it eight decibels to get a little bit closer to negative 16 luffs. It was better than Joey imagined. A black beach winding along the crags like a pathway to him. So already that's pretty close. Um, I hear like a little bit of preamp noise, which again is pretty common on those Zoom recorders. That's why I would say, man, maybe just get rid of that thing and get something with a little cleaner preamps. If we just loop this section right here, let me throw a, uh, a spectral analyzer on here. Let's see. Right. So this is all, all that's preamp noise right there. So that's kind of what we want to avoid. But I threw Isotope RX-8 
denoise on here and i just looped this section and i i played it over and over and i turned my headphones up as loud as they can go making sure to not get any of the actual voice until i couldn't really hear any signal and then i backed it off a little bit to make sure that we're not really degrading the voice at all i think that isotope rx 8 is very transparent it doesn't degrade the noise but i started there to get rid of a little bit of that preamp hiss usually what i'll do next is vocal rider if you know if you've seen any of my videos you know that i'm a big fan of vocal rider i think this signal has been compressed already but if we're trying to hit negative 16 i want to keep it there so i have this on a kind of a slow attack i'm usually going pretty fast but chris your voice is really soft and like smooth so i didn't want to adjust anything too quickly and we'll hear more about that later a black beach winding along the crags like a pathway to a magical realm so you can see it's not really boosting anything uh, until like realm it's, it's kind of just bringing up this tail so that we're not losing it in the background here so i set the target for the average or a little bit below that grass or moss growing on the stone walls disappearing high above into layers of mist so layers of mist it brought up like two decibels so it's not really doing a lot and that's just going to keep it a little closer to that average um around here i heard some mouth clicks and especially right here there's a click in the audio itself if we listen closely like massive steps meant you hear that there's like a, a dropout like massive steps that was my dog barking not the audio like massive steps meant so I threw on mouth D click because I want that on there anyways, but it actually took care of this click. Like massive steps meant for an ancient god. So that's another great thing to have on the master channel. It adds a ton of latency, almost 4,000 samples. So I put it on the master so there only has to be one instance of it running. Now, oh man, I spent a lot of time trying to find the right compressor for your voice. I... Again, because I mentioned it was kind of smooth, my first thought was the CLA 2A, since it's an optical emulated compressor, it's going to be a lot slower due to the nature of its mechanical build and what the plugin emulates. It turned out a little crunchy, and I didn't like the, the grit and the coloration that it added to your voice. So then I tried this very Mew compressor by Klanghelm. Really beautiful compressor. It was great too, but I felt like it was doing too much work. So I tried something I've never done before on like a, just an, an individual vocal track. I used the SSL master bus compressor, which is just a VCA compressor. Uh, it's a very special one. It's supposed to be like a bus glue. That's supposed to bring a whole mix together. Drums, vocals, guitars, bass, all that stuff. But I felt like it added a really smooth, even tone to your voice. And I'm not boosting the volume with the compressor, but it's, adding a lot of bodies so let's listen to before and after this compressor this is going to be before columns of basalt rose up against the peak cliff behind like massive steps meant for an ancient god to ascend to the top of a rocky pyramid so the long-term average is good but there's some like short-term peak so this is going to level those out this is with compression columns of basalt rose up against the peak cliff behind like massive steps meant for an ancient god to ascend to the top of a rocky pyramid was that grass or moss? So it's a, it's a pretty, uh, it's a one millisecond attack, which is pretty slow and the fastest release. And I think it does a really good job at leveling out the short term peaks, but also adding a lot of body to the voice. We can see here on the duro meter, we're not really adding a ton of volume. It's just depth to the voice itself. So we'll watch uh, the meters down here. This is going to be without compression. Columns of basalt rose up against the peak cliff behind, like massive steps meant for an ancient god to ascend to the top of a rocky pyramid. So it started out at like negative 14 decibels, went down to negative 26, and then ended up in that like 16 or the 17 or 18 range. And this is with compression again. Columns of basalt rose up against the peak cliff behind, like massive steps meant for an ancient god to ascend to the top of a rocky pyramid.
So it only really added like one decibel, but it it brought up all the lower stuff. So it had a lot more body and depth to the voice itself. Now, again, you don't need to go out and like buy this compressor. I think it's $30. It's well worth it. Any compressor will do, but a pretty slow attack, a moderately fast release, hitting like an average of one decibel of gain reduction, getting up to about three decibels at these really high peaks here. And that gave me the dynamics that I was looking for in the voice. I thought that was really, really pleasing. So from there, uh, I went to equalization. And when we're dialing in dynamics and then we're doing subtractive EQ, we need to keep in mind that the volume is going to come down after we cut frequencies. So we're going to have to address loudness again in a minute. So these are the EQ moves that I did on the voice. Uh, it looks like kind of a lot. It's not really. So... Let's go band by band pretty quickly. Um, I didn't want to do a full roll off, so I just did a shelf cutting a lot of stuff below the fundamental frequency by about three and a half decibels. Columns of basalt rose up against the peak cliff behind. You see there's not much information around here, so from like 90 hertz and down, so I'm just attenuating it. We can do a low cut, and it would achieve about the same thing. Columns of basalt rose up against the peak cliff behind. Like massive steps meant, uh, but you know, that might actually be cutting out more than I really want. So let's, let's keep the shelf there. So we're keeping some of that low end columns of against the peak cliff behind like massive. All right. So there's a little bit of like room tone in that, uh, that just sound of the room that I'm trying to get rid of. In addition to in any voice, there's going to be a little bit of resonant frequencies. Chris, I think you recorded this very well. So there's not a lot. So let's listen to this band here. So this is going to be dynamic EQ. It's allowing to cut by up to three decibels if it needs to, but I'm really only constantly cutting six tenths of a decibel at 375 hertz. Columns of basalt rose up against the peak cliff behind. And that's just kind of like that like honkiness that isn't really pleasing in a voice. It's not your voice, Chris. It's everyone's. There's a little bit of honkiness down here. So I'm just trying to attenuate that a little bit and kind of keep it under wraps so that these really pleasing low ends really shine through with nothing interfering, nothing in its way. Columns of basalt rose up against the peak cliff behind, like massive steps meant for an ancient god to ascend to the top. So adding that little curve, I think, focuses on that low end, and it helps bring out some of those pleasing, like low, warm, the body of your voice. So this was kind of a ringing that I heard, uh, 455 hertz. Col Behind, like massive steps meant for an ancient god to ascend to the top of a rocky pyramid. Again, it's just helping focus this low end a little bit, a little bit at 718 as well. Columns of basalt rose up against the cliff behind, like massive steps meant for an ancient... All right, so let's listen to these, uh, these low end moves before. Columns of basalt rose up against the peak cliff behind... After. Columns of basalt rose up against the peak cliff. So to me, it sounds like even though we cut some of that low end, to, to me, it sounds like there's actually more because again, it's removing those boxy overwhelming frequencies. So it's allowing these to come through better. So by subtracting unpleasant low frequencies, we get more of the pleasing ones. So we actually hear a lot more bottom end in our mixes if we remove the right wrong frequencies. There's a little bit of mid-range I felt was lacking. So I what I did was, again, with dynamic EQ, I boosted 1.2 kilohertz by half a decibel. And if it ever got overwhelming, so on a lot of vowel sounds, it'll kind of boost in that range. I allowed it to cut by half of a decibel. And we can see that moving up and down as we listen. Columns of basalt rose up against the peak cliff behind, like massive steps meant for an ancient god to ascend to the top of- So when god came, you can see it, it cut by a decibel, whereas before it was boosting by half a decibel. And that just allows those moments to not cut through and kind of attack on your on your earbuds, because this, uh, this frequency is- your ear is pretty well tuned to it. Columns of basalt rose up against the peak cliff behind, like massive steps meant for an ancient god to ascend- So let's listen to that- that word god without the dynamic EQ on it. It's just gonna keep boosting it by half a decibel. For an ancient god to ascend to the top of- 
for an ancient god to ascend. So it just kind of evens it out. It's acting like a, a very, very small compressor for just this tiny frequency range. And then I have uh, S here because I, I found a couple frequencies that weren't pleasing in the S's. So I'm using the EQ as a de -esser. We can watch them kind of shoot up right around here in this, in this area. Was that grass or moss growing on the stone walls? Grass, moss, stone walls. Lots of S's. So I use this as my sample range for where the S's were. Was that grass or moss growing on the stone walls disappearing? And they kind of shoot out. So I wanted to not really cut anything all the time. But when the S's come in, you're going to see it cut those out. Was that grass or moss growing on the stone walls disappearing high above into layers of mist? And four. Was that grass or moss growing on the stone was that grass or moss growing on the stone walls disappear? All right. So that's the EQ. Let's listen again to before and after. Columns of basalt rose up against the peak cliff behind. Like Columns of basalt rose up against the peak cliff behind. Like massive steps meant for an ancient god to ascend to the top. So to me, this sounds a little more... I don't like the word passive, but it's allowing it to kind of flow into your ears, especially if you're wearing earbuds and not really at any point be overwhelming on anything. You don't want to hear this sound coming from within your head. You want to feel it around you. And I feel like when you mellow these harsh frequencies, it's actually allowing the, you to be enveloped by the sound rather than having it like shooting into your ears. If that makes sense at all, I have no idea, but it makes the experience more pleasing, more passive, like it's washing over you rather than happening to you. Now, if you have Sooth 2 by OEK Sound, it is uh, one of my favorite plugins, Dynamic Resonance Suppressor. So any of those unpleasant frequencies, it's going to just kind of get rid of them. So let's listen to before and after. And again, this doesn't need to be on your chain. It's just kind of a cherry on top if you have it. Columns of basalt rose up against the peak cliff behind, like massive steps. Ma Columns of basalt rose up against the peak cliff behind, like massive steps meant. So I'm allowing it to attenuate a lot of this like 550 range, which is going to be honky. I don't want it to remove a lot of the low, low end because I think it's really pleasing. And a little bit of these like harsh frequencies up here, it's just kind of doing like a much more surgical version of this dynamic EQ. And uh, I threw another de on here very slightly just to help more with these S's. Was that grass or moss growing on the stone walls disappearing high above into layers of mist? So before. Was that grass or moss growing on the stone walls disappearing high above into layers of mist? After. Was that grass or moss growing on the stone walls disappearing high above into layers of mist? So to me, it sounds more present. It sounds more rich and full, and it's going to be a much more pleasing experience to listen to, especially if you're listening over noise um, in a car or while you're washing dishes or cooking breakfast. That's usually when I'm listening to my podcasts and uh, that bacon sizzle uh, can really kind of mask <laughs> some frequencies. So we want to make sure that we're, we're pretty tight in this, in the dynamics and let's actually restart this and let's see what we have here on our meter. Was that grass or moss growing on the stone walls disappearing high above into layers of mist? A line of white capped waves formed between the black beach and gray waters of the North Atlantic. All right, so let's lower this half a decibel and we're going to call that done. Now, I believe this is your wife, Cynthia. Um, and her voice sounds really good too. I did a lot of the same things. I adjusted the... Actually, no, the de is just the same thing. All right. Uh, the EQ has its own thing. I set in the range on Vocal Rider just to be a little bit below the average. And it did mean something to him, I suppose. So it's bringing up, I suppose. Uh, the biggest difference, though, was the EQ. And I'll run through this quickly. So if we look at it compared to yours, Christopher, it's it's got some similarities, right? I really wanted that mid-range again. Uh, it's the same de -esser. 
Uh, you both perform pretty well. I did cut more of her low end. And the biggest thing was there was like a resonance down here that was a lot worse on hers than yours. So let's listen to a before and after with EQ. And it did mean something to him, I suppose. At least in the sense that he wanted you. And after. And it did mean something to him, I suppose. At least in the sense. So this frequency here, 330. to finally take it was just really really overwhelming so let's listen to it without these engaged and it did mean something to him i suppose at least in the sense that he wanted you to finally take this trip so again it allows the fundamental frequency here to breathe and that's going to be where the body of the voice comes in and you can see here that this is like a secondary frequency that we're attenuating and it did mean something to him i suppose at least in the sense that he wanted you. All right, we got the dynamic EQ doing kind of a lot of work. And then some of these similar moves into yours. Now, there's a, a bigger issue with the preamp noise on her signal. If we, uh, if we were to duplicate this and take a look at the preamp noise here. All right, that's, that's kind of a lot. And you can hear it if you listen really closely. Thing to him, I suppose. At least in the sense that he wanted you to finally take this trip. All right. So we have the Isotope RX doing like a little bit more work on her voice. I don't know if uh, she's maybe a little further away from the microphone, which if you're having issues with your room, the further you are from the microphone, the more you're going to hear the room. So it's possible that she was further away. So you had to turn up the gain, which increases preamp noise and also increases room tone, but a pretty similar thing going on there. But overall, I think this sounds really, really good. Um, you know that I love your podcast. You know that I enjoy it. The stories are great. That's what really matters. But I think these couple moves can really increase the audio quality of the show. So I'll be sending you a PDF with all of these settings and hopefully when put into practice, it'll make you happier with the sound of your show. You know, I'll be listening. Thank you so much, Chris and Cynthia for participating. I'll talk to you all soon. Thank you all so much for checking out Clean Cut Audio Mixlab. If you're interested in submitting your own files, again, you can go to cleancutaudio.com slash mixlab. Whether or not I am working on your voice, you can still learn a ton by watching an audio engineer work through many different scenarios, many different types of voices, of microphones, styles of recordings. There's a lot to learn just by watching someone do what they do. So please subscribe to the channel. I hope I've earned your subscription. I'll catch you all later. Please stay safe. I love you all. See ya.